Today we're going to show you how to take off a rear shock off of an 03 and up Crown Victoria and Grand Marquis. More simple in these later years. And all you have to do is remove this bottom bolt and nut, which is a 15 and a 19. We're going to spray that with some PB Blaster just to free it up a little bit. And then the hard part of this, which we didn't have much success doing it the first method. Here at the top, you can use, I think it's an SAE, we were using a 14 millimeter wrench. And then you have to use a vice grip. Can you hold this right here? A vice grip on this top portion to hold it. Well, our vice grip was not holding it. It was just stripping it. So what we ended up using is an oscillating tool to cut this off. So we're gonna show you how to do this. All right, so we want to have remove the uh, weight off of this shock here. So we're going to put a little bit of upwards force using a jack on the rear differential. So we're going to go ahead and give it a couple of pumps on the jack. That should be good for right now, and then once we start loosening it, we'll see uh, how much we got to go. So that's good there. Next step, we're going to take our 19. Make sure we have it on loosen mode. The 19 there, and 15 on an impact on the other side. It's on. All right, so we're going to break this loose. This nut is broken free now. Continue it the rest of the way. That's it. So now that we have that out, we can work on the top part here. That's where the oscillating tool comes in handy. So we're going to, in this little gap here under the rubber, start cutting it. And so cut through the rod with the piston part of the shock. It's going to create an immense amount of smoke. So. Be careful breathing. Maybe you want to have a fan on for ventilation. Just like that, whoo! You save yourself hours of fighting. So we're gonna just move that out of the way and get something to grab these hot pieces with. So this rubber is melted, so it's gonna be extremely hot. The bottom piece you don't need to save, but the top piece you do. And that's where the next part of this operation comes in. So next step is to put this piece in a bench vise. You see it's got a the shaft that was like the piston before. Now this uh, top hat, this top hat is an all in one piece with this nut. And we got to remove that nut from that stud there. So we're going to put a little bit of penetrating lubricant on it. And then we're going to get this vise super tight. I'm going to use a long bar. And then we're going to try to hit it with the impact. All right, so we were lucky enough that I was actually able to break this free with just this ratcheting wrench. So. I'm really surprised it actually gave like that. Okay. You didn't have to beat it. As you can see here, it's all one piece, but actually, it's kind of seized up. I think it should move freely. I'm going to hit it with a little bit of penetrating lubricant to try to free it up a little bit. 
this piece over here is going to accept the same piece that it had on underneath it this piece and this is going to go right on top of the new shock and it's going to make everything fit perfectly so to make your life easier putting this stuff I'm taking it off next time I'm going to put a little bit of anti-seize on the bolt and uh, yeah that should prevent it from seizing rusting in that area all right, so now we're going to place the shock back in the upper shock mount that's welded to the frame of the car. And next, we're going to place this nut and bolt through. V to make it easier, we're going to put the top cap on and the rubber bushing first. Yes. So it can just hang. Where is it? So here's the top cap. In my hand, you got the rubber bushing on it? Just at least thread that to start it. Yep. And then next, I'm gonna have to, we'll see if I have to raise or lower the rear differential. So it looks like I have to lower the rear diff. But I'm gonna go too far and then I'll have to bring it back. So watch your fingers. Stop. All right, bring it, all right, bring it back. There, that's it. All right, that was it. Now, he's going to hand tighten that, and then we're going to hit it with the impact in the wrench. So, the impact, we'll get a 15 millimeter socket on it, Plus and then the wrench is the 19. Okay. So, yes, yeah, so now we're going to hit it with the impact. <laughs> That's not a good position. All right, let's just double check it with the wrench and make sure it's tight. Oh yeah, that ain't going nowhere. We're gonna use this 14 multi multi wrench thing that we have. I'll tighten it down with that. Now the shaft is spinning with it, so we're going to have to hold on to the shaft and give it the last couple of turns. So now we're using a thinner wrench that doesn't ratchet, and we're going to get our locking pliers onto that top stud. And once we get that, we're going to have to loosen it up. We um, need the final couple of tightens. So this uh, locking pliers he has a little part on the end of it. They can actually place an object through it and tighten it some more instead of that little wheel type hole in it. So we tightened it down some more. And now we're gonna try to get some final tightening on it. That's it. Oh. Once that's tightened, you are ready to go ahead and put your wheel back on. Hopefully, your time is easier than ours, but if you have the right tool, you can kind of make quick work of it. I highly recommend the oscillating tool. You don't have to buy a Milwaukee one. You can get one pretty cheaply, maybe a plug-in one from Harbor Freight. Whatever it takes to get the job done is worth it. Make sure you have a good metal bit for it. Alright, thanks for watching and good luck.